This is Crystal Fenn from MedPage Today. I'm talking with Dr. Kevin Bozik of the University of California, San Francisco, about his study on the use of aspirin in venous thromboembolism prophylaxis after total knee replacement, which was presented here at the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons meeting in San Francisco. So, Dr. Bozik, what do your findings suggest for clinical practice, the use of aspirin rather than other um, thromboembolytic um, prevention techniques? Yeah, um, what our findings suggest is that there is, for a certain group of patients who undergo total knee replacement with specific uh, clinical care pathways, that aspirin may be as or more effective than other uh, uh, guideline-approved chemotherapeutic uh, agents. Now, there's been some controversy as to which guidelines for orthopedic surgeons to use. There's the American Academy of Chest Physicians guidelines and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. So what, what do these findings suggest as regards to that controversy? Um, it's a good question there. The two guidelines that you're referring to uh, use different endpoints um, in terms of their, uh, the measures they're looking at. The American College of Chest Physicians has been doing this for a long time. They use any venothromboembolic event, which includes deep vein thrombosis, either symptomatic or asymptomatic, as well as pulmonary embolism, either symptomatic or asymptomatic. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recognized that um, the, m the more clinically relevant outcome uh, uh, is uh, symptomatic pulmonary embolism and also factored in the fact that there are bleeding complications associated with these prophylactic agents um, which also influence patient outcomes. So the reason why the um, findings are somewhat different is because they use different endpoints uh, for their, uh, uh, to determine what is uh, an effective prophylactic agent. Now in your study, do you think that there are other factors besides just the agent that's being used that may have an impact since your study was retrospective? There's definitely other factors. Although we did uh, stratify and you, we did uh, multivariate uh, uh, regression analysis using multiple covariates including patient factors, clinical and demographic, hospital factors, as well as procedural factors, including uh, length of stay, uh, discharge disposition, et cetera. Um, there are certainly some unmeasured factors related to the clinical care pathways that cannot be captured in administrative data that came into play, but our data does suggest that for patients who are discharged, the, the patients who received aspirin are discharged home earlier, they're discharged to home and not to an inpatient rehabilitation facility, um, and they're being mobilized more quickly than the patients who are receiving the other agents. What will be the next step that's required? Yeah. The next step is to use this retrospective data as the um, genesis for a, a prospective randomized clinical trial, which would compare aspirin to the other uh, uh, chemoprophylactic agents. Those studies have been done in the 70s and 80s, but the clinical care pathways have changed dramatically since that time, uh, which is justification for a new clinical trial comparing those different agents. And meanwhile, what um, would you say um, should be the take home for clinicians who may be considering um, what to do for their patients? I would say that uh, more data is needed, that there clearly aspirin is appropriate for certain patients with, who undergo total knee replacement with certain care pathways, uh, but we have not defined what those patient characteristics are and what those treatment protocols are, and that would require randomized uh, clinical trials in order to answer those questions. Thank you, Dr. Bozik. I'm Crystal Fenn from MedPage Today.